All right, rolling. All right, hi, Heather. Hi, I'm Heather. How are you? I'm good. Good. So just say a little, bit, a little about yourself. Okay, so my name is Heather. I originally come from Vermont, and I've been in the Valley now for two years, and I'm a nature photographer, and I've been doing my business since 2011. And what's your business called? My business name is Natural High Photography. How'd you come up with that name? I kind of came up with that name because I've always been someone who has been inspired deeply by nature, both as a child, just spending time outside, and as my photography has evolved. And for me, it really just does speak to my spirit and my soul. And it kind of gets me off in a way that most things just cannot. When did photography become a large part of your life? Photography started for me when I was a kid. There was an after-school program, and it was just myself and two other students, and I kind of got introduced that way through a teacher who was just kind of teaching us the ins and outs of fun things you can do with photographs and, you know, different things you can do to manipulate, you know, the images that you capture. And I would say it's been within the past few years where I've really found my niche with my photography and really realize that it's not just a hobby for me, but it really is my heart song and my passion and something that just really drives me and something if at any point in time I could ever do it completely full time and not have to worry about anything else, I would totally dedicate myself to that. Um, so what, what drives your motivation nowadays? What drives my motivation is just the constant desire to want to push and improve myself, particularly with my work. You know, I started off a few years ago with a Rebel uh, T1, and then I had a Canon G Spot, which was just a very small, nothing big camera. And then as I was growing and given the gifts of really exploring better equipment and better lenses, I was really able to go out there and just push myself more as an artist and capture things in a whole other light that I wasn't able to do before. And as I was sharing them with people who were getting to know me and what I was doing, they, in their kind words and their support, really, I think, supported my desire to really go at this with a little more full throttle than I had before. What are some of the hardest uh, challenges you've had to c overcome for such as, you know, timing or equipment or monetary concerns? I think some of the hardest things that I've had to overcome is definitely the financial aspect. Photography is unfortunately not a cheap adventure to dive into. But, you know, as often people say, oh, what kind of camera do you have? What equipment do you use? And I often have to stop and not just remind them, but remind myself that it's not always about the equipment. It really is about the person behind the camera and the gear and being able to capture things in a way that maybe they haven't thought about or, you know, bring things to light. Maybe they've seen the same thing 15,000 times, but to capture it with the lens and being able to work with it as a photographer, you know, brings it to a whole new perspective for them. What is your process? for shooting and editing? So for shooting, I'm one of those people, you know, if I have the ability, I will just get in my truck and I will get lost on purpose and just drive for hours with no mindset of where I'm going or where I'm gonna end up. And I often stumble across some really awesome locations. I very often can't find them again, but that's kind of, I think, a nice thing for me because it really just captures the whole in the moment mentality that I like to live in. And, you know, when I get them home, I kind of will just sit there. I will turn on some tunes and I will edit and work with these photos for hours on end. I try my best not to manipulate them too much. You know, many of them aren't necessarily straight out of camera, but, you know, the process of me, you know, over enhancing them is something that I don't want to do. I try my best to really present what I saw through a perspective of a camera. And some of the photos, you know, I'll just basically enhance the colors or, you know, brighten them up. But outside of that, I really don't do a lot to manipulate what I do. So you appreciate the realism in photography? I very much appreciate the realism in photography, particularly when it comes to nature, because I try my best to really capture, you know, that sunset or that starry night that people, you know, maybe just take for granted on a daily basis. So what do you think sets your photographs apart from those of other photo photo nature photographers? I think what sets me apart is part of the realism aspect. You know, I'm not, I don't have a lot of fancy equipment. I don't have the $10,000, you know, 20 foot long lens. I work with very minimal equipment. And I think what sets me apart is that I really try to bring to people what is often missed in a hurried world. You know, when I go out there, I think to myself, is this something that I would want to share with others? And if I kind of don't feel it within me, 
that's something someone else would want to be able to look at it, then I kind of think that maybe, you know, that's not a moment for me to capture. So in terms of photography as an art in the grand scheme of things, what do you think is its, impo its importance to the world? Not just to you, but as mm -hmm. an art firm existing among other art forms. I think what it does for the world is it just really presents to people a way of seeing things in a completely different light. You know, I've had people come up to me when I'm at a show, for example, and one thing I've noticed that photography can do is really encapture an individual to share life stories with you. You know, maybe they don't have the money to purchase something, but they will stand there and talk to you for like 45 minutes because that particular photograph reminded them of something that happened with their grandmother 30 years ago in that same location. So I think for me, you know, being able to share my work and just photography in general, it just really speaks to people and it just really encaptures their soul to be able to want to dig deep and just to remember things in a positive way. So do you have any formal training in photography? I don't have any formal training. Outside of that one class that I took when I was about eight years old in an elementary school, I don't have any other training whatsoever. I've kind of looked at other artists, you know, and other photographers that I've come across along the way just to see what they do and how they do. I've emailed a few of them just to say, you know, what are your suggestions for a lens, for example, to go do astrophotography. But outside of that, it's a combination of trial and error, maybe reading a book now and again, but really just getting out there and just seeing what I can do to make work. Are you interested in pursuing other types of photography, such as wedding or portrait? I have been approached by a few individuals who, you know, do portraits, weddings, things of that nature. It's not something that I consider myself specialized in, you know, but I have done it. I did do my first engagement shoot this past fall for a relative of mine, and I actually thought they came out very well, but I, th I think for me what I was able to do, I was able to find the balance with the portrait because I was able to just remind them, like, I'm not a studio person, but I can definitely do stuff for you outside. So being able to balance the nature with the portrait, I think, really allowed me to broaden myself as a photographer but also stick to my roots with incorporating the nature piece. Do you think that your photography will, do you think that in the future you will be able to p potentially uh, take photographs that will like revolutionize like the world, like bring an entirely new, d different look to the world of photography? I don't know if I will be the person to bring an entire different look but I do see myself as being someone who will consistently improve and grow. I mean, this past, just moving to the Valley within the past two years, I've had so many amazing experiences that all have allowed me to just catapult myself as a photographer and really get myself out there. Um, this past fall, I had a company out of Boston approach me who wanted to use one of my pieces for one of their promotions in their distributions that they do on an annual basis. So that went out to about 8,000 different customers for them. So, you know, maybe I'm not going to change the world, but I definitely see myself as becoming more known and more, you know, available, so to speak, with my photography and people just really being able to take it in and be available to them. And do you think that's in part due to the thriving culture of the Valley? I think so. I think so. I mean, you know, Vermont is a wonderful state. It will always be my home place to go to, but there's something about the Valley, I think, that really supports and allows artists to grow, and they really reach out. You know, it's not a place where if you want to be able to grow, people are going to shut you down. I mean, that's kind of how I ended up here. You know, I approached um, Helen over at Cup and Top Cafe in Florence, Mass., and she did select me as the first artist of this current year to display my work for January and February. And it's, like, it's little things like that since I've been here that have allowed me to have new moments and new experiences because of my photography. Do you have any other shows around currently? I don't have anything currently coming up. I have done shows in the past. You know, I've done things like large garlic festivals and things of that nature, but I haven't had any time to really schedule myself for anything in addition to what I just did at Florence. In terms of equipment, what do you use? I currently just use a Canon Rebel T3i. It was my, burst, my first bigger camera that I was given as a gift a couple of years ago, and I just basically have the two kit lenses that come with it. I will, when I want to be able to get out and do my astrophotography, I will work with a Tokina lens to be able to really capture the starlight. Um, but I haven't done any major growing in terms of equipment. I've kind of been using the same equipment for about, I would say, three years now. Do you think uh, use it, using the equipment you're at now, has it potentially inhibited uh, maybe ideas of photographs you, you, you take or anything? Do you 
I definitely think there is a level of, you know, where I am kind of drawn back a little bit with what I'm able to do because some of the things that I want to be able to capture, I can, but they don't come out with the same quality that maybe an upgrade in the camera body or a camera lenses will allow me to do. So my goal is at some point, you know, when I'm making a little bit of money here and there, you know, putting it together and being able to either upgrade in body or at least upgrade in some lenses to be able to capture the things that I want to do. Because with the lenses that I have now, like I can go out and capture the stars at night, but you don't get the clarity and the crispness. So by improving on my lens, I can actually capture things like the Milky Way and really just bring things out on a whole new level that I can't with what I have right now. So you say you're, you're very interested in nature, but you've spoken a lot about astrophotography. Mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's your take on, on astrophotography? So for me, astrophotography is I will, you know, particularly in the summertime, it's a little bit warmer, um, just I will go out for several hours from like midnight until like 5 a.m. in the morning and just go. And often what I'll do is I'll pre-select locations by driving around during the day, and then I'll return to those locations at night and do landscapes or, you know, different foreground shots with the night sky behind it. And so how do you get some of these shots that are of, of not only the earth, but also of the very clear, clear and starry sky? I know a lot of photographers do a lot of stacking to be able to achieve some of the photos that they have. Stacking. So stacking is basically where, you know, you might capture the photo in the foreground and get that image first. And then you capture the evening sky, for example, to get that. And then you merge the two photos together. That's something that I'm not currently doing. I do basically do like, you know, I won't, I'll do multiple takes of the same shot to I get what I want. And it, they seem to be coming out very well. I know at some of the shows that I've done, they have definitely been my more popular series, you know, for customers, whether it's in purchasing or just in admiration. So it's just, there's something about being able to sit out underneath the night sky and just be in that kind of stillness and that quiet that is very empowering. And it's like, it's, the silence is very beautiful. It's odd to say, but, you know, silence is a very powerful thing in that moment. And I remember the first time I captured the Milky Way, I think if, if there had been anybody within a 10-mile radius, I would have broken their eardrums. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, uh, see yourself ever working in video? I don't see myself doing the video route. You know, I kind of enjoy doing what I do just as the still shots with the camera and capturing nature the way I do. I don't necessarily see, but it's one of those things where I said the same thing about portraits and weddings and doing engagement shoots, and I allowed myself to branch out into that a little bit. So I say maybe not right now, but there's always the possibility that I'm willing to, you know, take a risk and a chance of just being able to grow and learn something different. Do you think f photography is one of the more, more, powerful mediums in culture? I think so, and I, that was kind of brought to my light the other day um, with one of the youth that I serve and the job that I do. Um, I, I'm currently transitioning out of what I do as a therapeutic mentor, but he, you know, it's his last session with me, and he's like, you know what I did? He's like, I went to my after-school program, and I signed up for the photography class. I'm like, well, that's fantastic. That's so awesome. He's like, do you know why I did that? I go, no. He's like, because I know you do photos, and I know you love photography, and I wanted to be able to do something to remember you by. So just in the time that we spent together and sharing those things and really being able to help him grow with what he needed to learn, he, was, he really just, it just allowed him to feel comfortable and at ease and gain something that he hadn't had in his life before. Do you have any uh, photographer inspirations, role, role models, favorite photographers? Um, ben Canales is a huge astrophotographer. He is one of my favorites. Between his still shots and his time-lapse videos, he is absolutely incredible. Um, there's also a local artist out of Burlington, Vermont named Brian Dror, who is He's also, he primarily does nature photography as well, but a lot of his concentration was astrophotography. So those are two people who I followed quite a bit. And there's also Jack Fusco out of New Jersey, who was very big in astrophotography. And he's one of the ones I've actually been able to be in conversations with when I've had questions about, you know, what do you suggest, you know, for really nice night shots? What kind of lenses do you suggest that I use? And then the other gentleman is John Secord out of New Hampshire, big nature photographer. He's one of the ones I approached when I started working with that company in Boston about, you know, working with my image and how to best approach that. So these guys have been really great and influential, not just with my work, but in also being very approachable in questions so I can actually learn and have people to reach out to. Great. Uh, anything else you want to say? No, I think that's about it. How can we contact you? You can find my Facebook page, Natural High Photography, and I am there. And I'm labeled as being in Bennington, Vermont, so I just so you know when I pop up, that's what it will come up as. 
Um, and you can also email me at hbvortex, hbvortex at gmail.com, and I will reply to anyone who feels